Will you please be seated? Good morning. Good morning. My name is Logan McMenemy, and I'm the retired bishop of the diocese. I'm so very pleased to be able to be with you here in person and for those gathering online this morning. It's a joy for me to be here. Alistair asked me if I would come this morning and uh, give him a chance to have a rest and refreshment, um, a time away. So it's wonderful to be here. It's wonderful to be part. Thank you all. I honor you for wearing your own shirts today. I just raise my hands to you and thank you for, for the on shirts. We gather today in the traditional territories of the Lagonkin speaking people, the Sonnies and Esquimalt nations. We give thanks for their presence here in the Southern Island, for their welcome to us as settlers, for the hospitality, for their journeying with us, uh, especially with you. I know your connection as a parish with uh, both uh, nations and the work you've done. We continue on that journey. It's a long journey, a long journey of truth-telling, he hearing difficult things, a journey of healing for those involved, including us, including us as a church and us as a nation, uh, as, we, um, as we continue on that journey. A journey of reconciliation, a conciliation, as some people are beginning to call it. So thank you for this opportunity to be with you. I look forward to the service and um, let's begin our service with the parish prayer. Loving God, you have called us to be your family and to celebrate our life together in the worship. We pray now for all members of our family as we gather in our church building, our homes and our lives. Through your spirit, keep us united in love. Bless each of us with your Teach us, gracious God, how to be your church in these times. Help us to know that we are your people, that you are our family. Always. Amen. Just before we hear the calls to action, I'm going to ask you to stand as you're able during the reading of this call to action. This is number 59. We call upon church parties to the settlement agreement to develop ongoing education strategies to ensure that their respective congregations learn about their church's role in colonization, the history and legacy of residential schools, and why apologies to former residential school students, their families and communities were necessary. Number six, we call upon church leaders, leaders of the church parties to the settlement agreement and all other faiths in collaboration with indigenous spiritual leaders, survivors, schools of theology, seminaries, and other religious training centers to develop and teach curriculum for all student clergy and all clergy and staff who work in Aboriginal communities on the need to respect indigenous spirituality in its own right, the history and legacy of residential schools and the roles of the church parties in that system, the history and legacy of religious conflict in Aboriginal families and communities, and the responsibility that churches have to mitigate such conflicts and prevent spiritual violence. We call upon church parties to the settlement agreement in collaboration with survivors and representatives of Aboriginal organizations to establish permanent funding to Aboriginal people for community controlled healing and reconciliation projects, community controlled culture and language revitalization projects, community controlled education and relationship building projects, and regional dialogues for Indigenous spiritual leaders and youth to discuss Indigenous spirituality, self-determination, and reconciliation. We 
call upon the federal government to work with churches, Aboriginal communities, and former residential school students to establish and maintain an online registry of residential school cemeteries, including, where possible, plot maps showing the location of deceased residential school children. We call upon the federal government to work with the churches and Aboriginal community leaders to inform the families of children who died at residential schools of the child's burial location and to respond to families' wishes for appropriate commemoration ceremonies and markers and reburial in home communities where requested. It's one thing to hear these calls to action read. It's another thing to commit ourselves to these calls to action. I ask you as individuals and as this parish of St. John, do you recommit yourself to this ongoing work? Thank you. From wherever we are, near or far, we gather in the name of God. We gather in God's love. There is no distance greater than God, 
no intimacy closer than God. There is no separation possible from the love of God. We gather with God, our loving creator. We gather with Jesus, our brother and redeemer. We gather with God, spirit of love. family in heaven and earth takes its name. You have rooted and grounded us in your covenant love and empowered us by your spirit to speak the truth in love and to walk in your way towards justice and wholeness. Mercifully grant that your people, journeying together in partnership, may be strengthened and guided to help one another to grow into the full stature of Christ who is our light and our life. Amen. We sit to listen for the word of God. A reading from James. Are you suffering? Send up prayers. Are your hearts glad? sing traditional songs of honor and praise. Are any among you sick? Call on the elders of the sacred family to pray over them and smudge them with sweet smelling smoke in the name of our honored chief. When you send your voice to our honored chief, trusting in him, he will heal the sick ones and restore them to health. He will forgive and set free any who have been following their bad hearts and broken ways. So admit your broken ways one to another and pray for each other that you may be healed. The prayer of one in good standing with Creator is powerful and good medicine. 
Great Spirit is creator Elijah, was a weak human being, the same as we are. He prayed with much prayer that it would not rain, and for three winters and six moons, no rain fell on the land. Then, when he prayed for the rain to fall, down it came, and once again, Mother Earth gave a harvest of good food. My sacred family members, has any of you wandered from the truth? Has anyone helped you find the way back? If so, then let them know that the one who helps someone return from broken ways has rescued their soul from death and hidden the many paths that lead to broken ways. Hear what the Spirit is saying. God is with you and also with you. Hear the good news of Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus. Then he shows goodwill, said to him, Wisdom keeper, we saw a man forcing out evil spirits using your name. We told him to stop because he does not walk the road with us. Do not stop him, he answered. No one who can do works of power using my name will suddenly turn against me. The ones who are not against us are for us. I speak from my heart. Anyone who brings the gift of even a drink of water, the ones who represent me will never lose the honor that has been gained. But let no one cause one of these little ones who have put their trust in me to stumble away from the path. It will be better to have a great stone tied to one's neck and to be thrown into the great waters. 
If what your hand does causes you to stumble off the path, then cut it off and throw it away. It would be better to live this life with only one hand than to go with two hands into the valley of smoldering fire, a fire that cannot be put out. If where your foot walks causes you to stumble from the path, then cut it off and throw it away. It would be better to walk this life with only one foot than to walk with two feet right into the valley of smoldering fire, a fire that cannot be put out. The same thing goes for your eye. If, it, if what it sees makes you stumble from the path, then pluck it out and throw it away. It would be better to walk Creator's good road with only one eye than to see with two eyes and be thrown into the valley of smoldering fire. This valley of smoldering fire is the place spoken of in the sacred teachings, where there worm does not die and the fire cannot be put out. All will be salted with fire, for all ceremonial offerings are salted before they are burned with fire. Salt is a good thing, for it purifies, heals, and makes things taste better. But if it becomes unsalty, what will make it salty again? So make sure that you, like salt, keep your true flavor by walking with each other in the way of peace. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you. <laughs> join with me in prayer. Your word, Lord, is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Continue to give us light, guidance, and direction as we seek to serve and follow you in our generation. Amen. Some of you, like me, might have gone on pilgrimages to the UK. Some might have gone for some tour of churches in different parts of England. And one of the things that always surprises me when you go on a tour of church in England is someone will take you around and say, oh, this part, this part comes from the English Reformation. Uh, this part, this part comes from the English Civil War. This part, this part comes from the Blitz. And they'll tell you all of these different things. And then they'll say to you, this part, this part here, isn't it beautiful? It comes from Saxon times. Absolutely beautiful, Saxon times. This part, with disdain in our voice, comes from Norman times. It's as if they only just arrived. <laughs> but wrought within England is the Norman conquest, especially in the north of England. And I think there's an illustration for us there about our role as colonists similar to the Normans. Of course, the harrowing of the north is a story of pain and anxiety, of abuse, where the land was laid fallow for years and there was um, men, women, and children massacred because the North stood up to the Norman invasion and wouldn't let them take over easily and suffered a great price for their colonization of England. One of the things that stands in the North of England, it's a beautiful building, is the Durham Cathedral. And Durham Cathedral certainly was built from the Norman perspective, for the glory of God. But it was also built to say to the North, we are here to stay. Don't expect us to leave soon. We've come to stay. This is our building. And every time you look at that building, look and say, we are here. And we are not going anywhere. Cathedrals are the mothership of empire. 
Cathedrals are the motherships of empire. And I can say that, being a dean of a cathedral at one time. So when we came to this land, we built buildings, and we started to make this land look like the lands we came from. And we, being an ethnic church, as Anglicans, wanted it to look a lot like the old country. So our buildings are colonial buildings. The cathedral is a colonial building. This church looks a lot like churches in England. The parliament buildings are colonial buildings. So we arrive and we shape the land to look like us. We bring plants from the old country. We bring English holly and we plant English holly. And you can't blame it for me, but some Scotsman decided to bring broom. <laughs> and he brought broom and that's all across the country. But the idea of it was to make it look like where we came from. A painful thing for us. It wasn't only the land we tried to reshape in our own image. We did it with the people. We did it with the people and when it didn't work, church along with government decided to exterminate, to remove those people. And we have inherited that legacy. We try to shape this land and its people in our image. And there was suffering and there was pain. And that's why we have this day on Thursday called the National Day of Truth and Reconciliation. Abuse, sexual, psychological, spiritual, physical happened because we, along with the government, decided for some reason that either because God was telling us to do that, or it was becoming a good citizen, or it was just because what Canadians did, we decided to be part of a residential school system. And we caused pain and anguish. Since my retirement, I like listening to blogs. <laughs> And I love watching blogs. I like listening to pods. Um, I can't remember what they're called now. But, but I like to listen to them. One of the ones I think is very, very challenging and has been challenging for me as a white male. And I have to come to terms with that over the last year, a lot of listening to this particular um, podcast. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It's called Reclaiming My Theology. It comes out of Seattle by a woman called Brandy Miller. And Brandy Miller talks about white supremacy as it's seen in many different ways. And one of the ways she talks about it is in what is called virtual imaging. Virtual imaging. And virtual imaging normally is a good thing because we show either by flag or by t-shirt what is important to us. What is important. My experiences, there are some people who show those flags and who wear the t-shirts and who are committed to action to do something about it. There are some who are really not interested. Some congregations, they'll be talking about other things. Personal spirituality, how to read the Bible in three easy lessons. They'll be talking about all sorts of things, but what we are about today. But there will also be some who will wear the t-shirt or fly the flag, but have no intention to take any actions. And that's the downside of virtual imaging. And the challenge for us is when we wear the t-shirts and when we hear the calls to action, and I ask you to remind people, they're not recommendations. <laughs> they're calls to action. And when we hear those calls and actions to stand and to respond to them and say, yes, we are going to do something about it. Residential schools, the survivors of residential schools and their families are living reminders of long, the long-term impact of the religious powers. That in the name of God and Canada and citizenship and whatever else perpetuated criminal abuse. How are we still connected to our colonialism? 
How are we still connected to that past? Jesus' challenge in Scripture today is a hard one. It's called one of those, those hard sayings of Jesus. Not hard to interpret, but hard, if we're serious, to live out. What do we need to sever? What do we need to sever from our lives, from our families, from our churches, from our country that causes us to stumble? We are still living with the effects of colonialism. We still live that out. Sure, we can change the liturgy. That's a good thing. I'm so pleased during my time as bishop, this liturgy became used throughout the diocese, the one we're using today. We can wear different vestments. We can do different things, little things. But the call is a serious call. For whatever causes you to stumble, sever it. Whatever causes you to stumble, sever it. Salt yourself, Jesus says, and be at peace with one another. Jesus says, be a difficult voice that will not allow convenience to dictate the questions of serious accountability. I'll say that again. Jesus says, be the difficult voice that will not allow convenience to dictate the questions of serious responsibility. Apology is good. Apologies need to happen nationally, church-wise, but they're only the beginning of a long journey, a long journey of truth-telling. How are we still a colonial church? In our structures and in our institution, in our hierarchy, how are we continuing to be a colonial church and what do we need to sever? We need to show genuine outrage towards these particular parts of who we are as a church community. What do you need to sever in your life? What do you need to sever in your church? What do we need to sever as a nation? When I was bishop, I talked about decolonization. But I don't think we were colonized. I think we were the colonizers. And what we need to do in our system and in our institution, in our churches, is to deconstruct that which is part of our colonial legacy. Jesus has harsh words for us, harsh words on this day. I find sometimes First Nations people are much gentler and have a different way of saying things. I took a course a few years ago with the university chaplain, with the archdeacon in Nanaimo, and with a layperson from the cathedral. It happened at Vancouver Island University. It was a, a course called Being Shaped by the Land. Being Shaped by the Land. We spent one day in class in Nanaimo, and we learned protocol, how you listen, how you listen, not to argue, but how you listen, how you listen to indigenous elders and chiefs. We learned some of the language, how to say good day, welcome, hokaminen uh, is a language of choice. And then we went out onto the land. We went to Somino's, to the big house, and we spent time learning about the teaching of the big house. And one of the interesting things uh, the, uh, the layperson said to me after we'd been there, I don't know if you know, and as we into a big house, there's a nail, six inch nail, nailed to the side of the big house. And the elder said, when you come in here, you hang up all of those bad thoughts, <laughs> all those evil things that, that direct you and shape you, you hang them up there and you don't take them in to the big house. The layperson said, every church should have one of those, shouldn't they? <laughs> But then we spent time on Penelope Island with an elder learning about plants and about life together and about fishing. We spent time in uh, Cowgen Bay on canoes, learning the importance of the canoe, how canoes are built, how canoes are, um, travel. The powerful part for me was going to the hatch hatchery in South Cowgen and going into the fish hatchery. And the person who talked about the, the the rejuvenation of the Cowichan River 
and the hatchery and fish coming back in the traditional ways. But the interesting part for me was he spoke about plants. He spoke about how the plants and the trees were tools, were food, were medicine, and how we should learn from those traditional ways. But then he spoke, he must have spoke maybe half an hour, 45 minutes, and he spoke about two types of plants. He spoke about indigenous plants, and he spoke about introductory plants. He spoke about those two plants living together and growing together. And he spoke about the need for the introductory plant to push out the indigenous plant, to take over the, um, the environment and, and to push out the indigenous plants. He spoke for 45 minutes and did not once use the term reconciliation. But we knew what he was getting at as he talked about how we need to cut back the introductory plants, how we need to sever parts of them so that the indigenous plants can grow and blossom and take over their rightful place. We are at an important place as the church, as the Anglican Church in Canada, a really important place. It's not to do about liturgy. It's not to do about hymns. It's not to do about all of that kind of stuff we add on. It's really to do about who we will be as a church as we journey together into the future. What parts do we need to sever as Jesus instructs us to do? What parts do we need to sever that we will allow, enable indigenous plants to grow? Will you join me in prayer? Difficult Jesus, you were not easy to be around. You pushed your friends into difficult questions and you did not back down from your distractors in the name of an easy friendship. You were salt and fire. You were sometimes spit in the eye. Help us to speak and ask and question and confess and name and change. Because we live in a world made by you, but also made by us, with institutions, residential schools, homes, communities that were anything but safe, that were anything but warm, that were anything but good. Amen.
holy God, you have called us to care for those who are our companions, not only with words of comfort, but with acts of love. Open us to feel the depth and energy of your presence always, especially when we pray in faith for the church and the world, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. A prayer from the Truth and Reconciliation Calls to Action, Learning, and Prayer Guide. Father God, we recognize that the responsibility of reconciliation is not only at the government level, but also at the community level. We thank you for this because it means all people can be involved in the important work of reconciliation. We acknowledge that as followers of Christ, we are one body following your lead. As one body, united in your grace, we pray for denominations who are named in the settlement agreement. Please give them a spirit of generosity and dedicated commitment to establish permanent funding to Aboriginal people for the work of reconciliation, relationship building, and regional dialogue projects. We ask that all the <clears throat> members of your body join in support of this provisioning and see this as a redemptive opportunity to build, re rebuild relationships, revitalize communities, and to reveal your loving goodness. We ask that your Holy Spirit powerfully move within all these projects. Help people to witness your love and compassion through the reconciling work of the church. Please lead us to come alongside one another as supporters in our communities. We pray that you will foster forgiveness in order to build restored relationships of trust. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, we pray for the church throughout the world, that its structures promote justice and its ministry model compassion. In the Canadian church, we pray for Linda, our primate, and Lynn, our metropolitan for the Diocese of New Westminster and Bishop John Stevens. Within our diocese, we pray for our Bishop Anna and for the Congregation of St. Mary Magdalene, Main Island, and their priest Blair Haggard, and St. Margaret Galliano Island and their priest, Sarah Tweedale. Grant for this congregation that the worship of our lips may be matched by the faithfulness of our hearts so that we may share in your work in the world. I ask your prayers for the church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, as our world sees with disease, anger, violence, and fear, guide those in authority to lead with integrity and compassion. We pray especially for the people of Afghanistan, for those in Myanmar fleeing conflict near the Indian border, and the Haitian refugees at the U.S.-Mexican border. Transform our complacence into compassion and ignite desire and courage within us to stand in faith and act together for all who are denied justice and basic humanity in our country and across the world. I ask your prayers for the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we see climate injustice and environmental chaos. We pray for the people of the Canary Islands whose lives have been changed by volcanic eruption and for those in Australia in the aftermath of the earthquake. In this season of creation, we pray that the breath of your creative word would move our hearts to advocacy and action. May these actions be held up with prayer and that your Holy Spirit would restore in us a sense of responsibility to be good stewards of our common home. I ask your prayers for the healing of the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, Hear our prayers for those who are sick, housebound, or in hospital. Surround the frightened with your tenderness. 
Give strength to those in pain. Hold the weak in your arms of love. And give hope and patience to those who are recovering. We lift to you those whose names are listed in our bulletin and those written on our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate God, hold close the hearts that sorrow as we celebrate all who have departed this life for eternal life in your complete love and perfect peace. Remembering especially the life and witness of Mary Alford and Elizabeth Macaulay. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, salt our souls with the fire of Christ's love, that we may serve, act, love, and teach through the power of your name, bringing each other back when we wander or follow broken ways. Remind us that on this journey of reconciliation, only education and honest confrontation with reality can build strong relationships and bring real healing. Give us strength to do this work. We ask all these things through Christ Jesus our Savior. Amen. My beloved siblings, Christ is our peace, and as we have just heard, that peace is a restless, disturbing, creative and renewing peace. May that peace, the peace of Christ, be with you.
Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given us and all that you have borne for us. In our sharing of this Eucharist, in the church or at home, we ask you to come spiritually into our hearts. O most merciful reformer, friend and brother, may we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly. Amen. the lands, all life came to be. In you all created things shared life with one another. In ceremony and song, dance and art, these relationships were portrayed and honored by the first peoples of these islands and inlets. The plants, the cedars, the creatures of the forest, sea and air, revealed your wonder and majesty. When we turn from you, Connections were broken and creation suffered. Still, you continue to bring light from night, freedom from slavery, and life from death. Therefore, together with our ancestors in faith and with your beloved creation, we sing. source of all. For the living word Jesus, born in poverty, a child refugee, a worker and carver with his hands, he gathered disciples and taught and healed the people. He freely shared our sorrow, joy, and pain. In vulnerability, he showed power over sin, triumphed over death. On the night before Jesus died, he feasted with his companions. He took bread gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his companion, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and the world for forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this to remember me. Entering into the mystery of faith, we call. With his sacred presence unbounded by space and time, we offer to you this bread and cup. Send your Holy Spirit the breath of life 
like wind blowing where it will, north, east, south, and west. May your spirit brood over these gifts and all who feast at this table, offering a foretaste of the eternal feast to come. May all who share your abundant gifts be incorporated as one body and one holy people, joining in the offering of Jesus' birth, life, death, and reconciliation, rec res resurrection, for the reconciliation of all things. Reveal the unity of your church, the mystery of our communion with our holy forebearers and those yet to be born, that we may be guided in faith and walk gently on the earth. Glory and honor to you, triune God. Dynamic of love, complete and perfect unity, now and in all ages. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. to share in the body of Christ. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God.
as you're able, will you please stand for the prayer? God in heaven, strengthen the unity of your church so that we who have been fed with holy things may fulfill your will in the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. One body are we. For though we are many places, we spiritual Please be seated for just a moment. Because I don't get the opportunity to do this anymore, <laughs> I need to take as much time as I can just to do some things. <laughs> and because my retirement was cut short um, and I didn't get a chance to do the things that I wanted to do and the places I wanted to go to, I just want to say to you, I am so impressed with you as a parish. You've always been a parish that I've, I've followed and, and watched and seen. It was a great joy for me when I was bishop coming here and celebrating with you. Thank you for your good words and your good work within this diocese and within this community, the voice that speaks within Victoria and within British Columbia and speaks a good word. So thank you for that ongoing work. And as you continue and walk on that journey, may God be the road upon which you travel, the mountains on which you are tested and tried, the wells at which you find healing and peace. May Christ be the light by which you travel, the lodestar shining in your darkest night, the vision which informs and enlarges you. And may the great spirit inspire you as you travel, the restlessness driving you to God, and the stillness bringing you to the heart of God. And the blessing of the God who created you, the Son who has befriended you, and the Spirit who has gifted you be upon you this day and always. Amen.